Almost two years ago, I made the Raid Boss Healer build series that changed the way many ESO players healed in PvP. With the Raid Boss builds, you and I together, we dismiss the notion that healers have to be in the backline and oftentimes have very little impact in matches. There was a different, more aggressive, more impactful way to play support for your team with a frontline juggernaut of a character making your team quite literally an unstoppable force. A year ago, we were introduced to one of the most powerful items ever seen in ESO, Okensoul. ESO's playstyle and build culture changed forever. One bar builds went from a very outlier experience to very much so a mainstream component to a very large portion of the player base, allowing them to reach new heights in many ways. Welcome to the game room. My name is Duma, and in today's video, we'll be combining one of the strongest PvP support builds we've ever made, reworked with Okensoul, and together, stretching the Warden class mechanics and potentials to new levels. You'll be able to regularly heal your team for millions of healing while running around with 50 or 60,000 health and in more situations than not, be truly and completely immortal. Today, I bring you the new Warden Raid Boss Healer build, the Support Warden Perfected. We'll start with the build's overview, giving you important information such as suggested races, Mundestones, consumables, and other miscellaneous aspects of the build. In part two, we'll discuss gear and its suggested configuration for your character. Here I will show you key aspects like armor types, traits, enchants, weights, and how your armor passives affect you. Next, we'll go over key abilities that make the build work. You'll learn what to use and how they work in synergy with your gear and passives. In part four, I'll teach you how to play the build where we'll go over your role, mindset, how to use your abilities, and various playstyle tips. With part five, I have a secret alternative setup for you that is definitely going to turn some heads. The written guide will be on our website, thegameroom.tv, where we have recently partnered with the wonderful people over at the Fox Den, bringing you, the ESO players, a website full of builds and guides for new and experienced players alike, along with important and up-to-date ESO news. If you enjoyed the video or learned something today, please consider liking and subscribing. It's free and goes a long way to help keep the mission alive. Let's begin. Part one is the basics behind the build. The foundation for your character to allow everything else to fall into place. Starting off with race, any Magicka base race will complement the build. If you really want the most out of the build, a Magicka base race that also specializes in sustain will perform even better. I am personally a Breton, but another fantastic option is the High Elf. Regarding sustain, the Breton gives you both Magicka recovery and a reduction in Magicka cost of your abilities by 7%. The High Elf restores resources every 6 seconds after using a class ability. For our attribute points, we have all 64 points put into health. This is the first part of many health boosting components. In part three, we'll discuss the abilities and why this extra health benefits the build and how to use it effectively. For our Mundus Stone, we only have one real option, and that is the Atronach Mundus, which increases our Magicka sustain. For consumables, we are using Orzorga's Red Frothguard Drink, which increases our health by over 5k and gives us maximum Magicka recovery. This is both a very cheap food to buy or make. As of the time of this video, they're being sold on PCNA for only 95 gold. Comparing this to the most popular PvP food, Bear Haunch, going for over 24,000 gold. Another positive aspect of the build. For our potion, we'll be using the basic tripods, which restores all three resources of Magicka, Stamina, and Health. The recipe for this potion can be found under the popular potions guide section of our website, thegameroom.tv. The link to this page will be in the video's description if you're interested. And finally, for our CP and overworld PvP, we'll be buffing both both of our main sources of healing, single target and area effect with the CP slottables of Focus Mending and Swift Renewal. Next, we will reduce the direct damage we take with Ironclad, and last is a very powerful slottable of Cleansing Revival. When you heal a target under 25% health, you remove all negative effects from them every 24 seconds. This can be huge in PvP as you will oftentimes be fighting many opponents, most of them stacking up negative effects on you and your group. And the Red Tree will be further boosting our health and resource recovery with the slottables of Boundless Vitality and Rejuvenation, further reducing our damage done with Pain's Refuge, and pushing our sustain through the roof with Sustained by Suffering allow you to really spam your abilities when focused. Part 2 is all about the gear you'll be equipping and how to configure it on your character. This is where we begin to start to stretch the build's potential by synergizing sets, skills, abilities, and passives together. Before we discuss the sets themselves, let's talk about their armor weights, traits, and enchants. Like we discussed in part one with putting all 64 of our attribute points into health, we're trying to push our total health as high as we reasonably can. We'll learn exactly why in the next section when we talk about abilities. 
In order to accomplish this with our armor, we take advantage of the heavy armor passives by having all seven pieces of our armor and the heavy weight. This gives us several important benefits to the build. First is it increases our tankiness and survivability by several different methods in the skill tree. It also aids in sustain in two ways. One, by restoring magicka and stamina when you take damage every four seconds, and another by increasing our magicka gained from our heavy attacks by 28%. And finally, it increases our total health by 14% by having seven heavy pieces. We then enchant every piece of armor with the health enchant and use the infused trait to boost the health enchant even higher. We will also use the healthy trait on all three pieces of jewelry. We then combine this with the warden green balance passive maturation, which grants us and our allies that we heal the buff minor toughness, which increases our health by another 10%. This will bring our grand total health to 53,797 with this exact setup, which is honestly an absurd amount of health to have for a healer build with this much healing output. For our first actual gear set, we'll be using the Redistributor set, which is a seven trait craftable set located in Imperial City. This set gives us more maximum health, which we need for our main healing component, maximum magicka, which we need to cast our spells, and also increases our healing done for most of our kit, and then Stamina, which is just generally good to have for many aspects of PvP. This is especially valuable as we aren't running try and chance on our gear. Our 5 set has a unique proc that heals a nearby ally every one second every time you overheal yourself, which is going to happen almost every second you're in combat with your team. I want you to think right now how many times you've been in a battleground and had a healer that only healed for 100,000, or 200,000, or 300,000. And if they could have just healed for a bit more during fights, that's all your team needed to have turned the tide and win the objective. This will vary slightly depending on your build specifics, but with this exact setup, this set will heal for 483 a second or 724 when it crits in PvP environments. If you factor for a general best case scenario for a full 15 minute death match where you heal your team to victory with minimal deaths, it's reasonable to say you will be healing for about 12 and a half of those 15 minutes, especially in this ultra tanky, slow paced meta. 12 and a half minutes is 750 seconds. With a 25% spell crit rating on the build, you should crit around 187 of those seconds, putting your grand total healing at almost half a million, all done passively by the armor set in a best case scenario example. We pair the redistributor set with the monster set Chokethorn, which can be easily farmed from the veteran dungeon Elden Hollow 1. This further increases our magic recovery and then has a very good healing proc roughly every 10 seconds that will heal a member of your team with a strong channeled heal over six seconds. Next is the mythic item Oaken Soul, which is the engine behind the build. This gives us a sea of buffs and gives us a ton of freedom for the build. Since we get most of our critical buffs from Oaken Soul, we don't have to worry about trying to fit them in other places in the build. Then we use two pieces of the endurance set on the necklace and ring spot. This is a three piece set obtained in the PVP zone Imperial City. We utilize the two piece set bonus of boosting our health even higher. Our final gear piece will be a powered Maelstrom Arena restoration staff with a weapon damage enchant. Perfected is not required, although it does help. This is another sustained component in the build designed to allow us to spam our main healing ability even more. The abilities on this setup look very basic on its surface, but there is a lot of utility and behind the scenes secondary action going on. These abilities working in synergy with the previous components of the build bring everything together, making this build truly special. First is the Restoration Staff ability, Radiating Regeneration, which places a 10 second heal over time on up to three players. This skill works in synergy with our Maelstrom Arena Staff, allowing many of our Radiating Regeneration critical heals to restore Magicka, allowing us even more ability spam. Next Next, we use the Undaunted skill Energy Orb, which sends an orb floating forward, healing all allies around it every second. It also has a very desired utility effect of a synergy that restores resources to the user of this energy and then heals all nearby allies. Blue Betty is a Warden Animal Class ability that summons an ally to restore your Magicka and purges one negative effect from you every five seconds. This will be another component of the build, making up for the lack of sustain in our armor and attribute setup choices, both from the skill itself and the Animal Companion skill Flourish giving us 12% more magicka and stamina sustain. Our fourth ability is Budding Seeds. This is one of the most dense healing skills in all of ESO with what it has to offer. It's an incredibly powerful AOE healing ability with multiple uses. First, it places a ring on the ground that heals all allies inside every second for six seconds, which then burst heals everyone inside. Next, it can be recast early for an on-use 
AoE burst heal to all allies inside. Last, it places a synergy called Harvest, which applies a strong heal over time for 5 seconds. Having this as a heal ticking every second on your team gives us access to the Warden Green Balance passive Accelerated Growth. When we heal an ally under 40%, which will be RNG based but semi constant, we get buffed with Major Mending, increasing all of our healing by 16% for 4 seconds. It also gives us constant access to the Green Balance passive Nature's Gift, which is our final sustain component of the build. Next is our main heal. This is the core behind the entire kit. Most elements of the build from our choices in food, attribute points, armor, weights, enchants, traits, passives, almost everything is positioned perfectly to prop up this one ability. This is the centerpiece of the build and everything else is just background noise. All aspects of the build working together to both elevate Polar Wind and allow you to spam it is what will make you and your team unstoppable as you are capable of spamming a huge burst heal on not one, but two targets and also placing a heal over time on them. And all of it scales off of guess what? Maximum health. And finally, our ultimate, the Warden Green Balance Ability Enchanted Forest. This is one of the cheapest ultimates in the game at only 90 ultimate, allowing you to use it constantly. It drops an AoE healing force on your team, burst healing the most injured ally, and then heals you and all allies in the area for 6 seconds. Part 5 is all about how to play the build and tips and tricks to make it work. When it comes to playing the build, you have two goals. One is to be the front line for your team, not in the back. If you can get the attention of your enemies, your damage dealers on your team can keep the offensive momentum and not have to slow their own damage to be defensive. And your other goal is after using your other abilities, focus your efforts on keeping your magicka up to spam polar wind. Every free and reasonable global when you have magicka while fighting and your other abilities are on cooldown should be spent either using polar wind or heavy attacking to return your magicka. With the Heavy Armor passive Revitalize giving us 28% additional Magicka per Heavy Attack, the Restoration Staff passive Cycle of Life restoring 30% more Magicka on a Heavy Attack, and the Restoration Staff passive Essence Drain giving us Major Mending for 4 seconds after a Heavy Attack, increasing our healing done by 16%, and healing a nearby ally for a portion of the damage done, we get a massive amount of Magicka back and fantastic utility by Heavy Attacking. Not to mention an added damage source to fights and randomly stunning a fling off balance enemy. When playing a frontline healer taking constant damage to proc heavy armor passives, keeping your potion and blue betty on cooldown, and heavy attacking regularly, you'll spend full 15 minute deathmatch brawls with almost never being really pressed for resources. As you're moving, constantly reposition your orb and seeds in the middle of your group. You want to try and maintain as much of your healing kit on as many people as possible, with as much uptime as possible. Every time your group shifts to a new spot outside of your healing, reapply these abilities. Try not to dodge roll much at all. Your stamina is very low and you'll be sprinting a lot leaving you stressed on stamina. You want to try to always keep enough stamina in reserve to break a CC. You'll end up sitting full CC fairly often due to our lack of overall stamina, but if you have done your job well and kept all of your healing kit rolling and active, you'll easily live through most things, especially in small scale combat. Very rarely have I actually died in CC when I had all of my heals rolling previously. Try to light weave as much as possible while running around and casting abilities. Not only is it just generally a good habit to have for ESO, but it's also one more damage source on an enemy in a tanky meta where every bit of damage matters. Do not sit on your ultimate. You will build it very fast and have it ready constantly. Get in the habit of using it often. Use line of sight. Places to constantly break line of sight from your attackers is everywhere. The use of this efficiently is a big factor that separates different levels of players. Remember, everyone is playing with latency to some degree. It may seem like you are in step with someone exactly chasing them around pillars, but you aren't exactly in step with them. There's a tiny window of separation. You can abuse that separation by also adding in constant breaks and their line of sight, canceling and outright preventing many forms of attacks on you. Smart line of sight play is at the core of your favorite PvP player who specializes in outnumbered open world PvP. You can can and should use this too as a support role to elevate your play and likewise your team even further. Every free and non-healing global 
should be spent using Blue Betty. This is generally a good practice to have to both develop, maintain, and support a higher APM playstyle. If that is an interest or goal of yours, which certainly can assist you in improving at PvP in general. Spamming Betty also procs the Warden Animal Companion passive Bond with Nature, which heals you every time an animal skill ends. Whenever you refresh Betty, the current one ends and a new one is summoned, procking the passive. This is also free to use, not costing you any magicka. It's a free source of passive healing, great to use when transitioning from spot to spot and a regular heal isn't needed, or in rare moments when you are fully out of magicka and have no other alternative. My final piece of advice is your mentality. It's not about you, it's about the team. You're purely a support build providing exclusively high healing output and utility. In more games than not, you have the ability to elevate your team and have a serious impact that influences a win. If they shine, you shine. With this amazing build, you have been given all the resources you need to make that happen simply, efficiently, and often. Our final part of the build is an alternative setup that is slightly less functional, but can be outright demoralizing for enemy teams and also fun to play. The big takeaway is we make a few modifications to boost our health to over 60,000, which is an almost laughable amount of health for anyone in PvP. This is done by dropping our Chokethorn monster set, two-piece endurance set, and the Maelstrom Restoration Staff. And we fill those spots with the Plague Doctor set, which is nothing more than a health boosting set. You can also use a Plague Doctor or Redistribution piece on the shoulder, which frees up the chest spot for one heavy piece trainee. You can also infuse a health glyph if you really want to lean into this build on your trainee piece, but it's not really necessary to hit 60k health. I'm using a fairly standard setup here for PvP on my trainee piece of Reinforced with Try and Chant. The only other aspect of the build we change is replacing Radiating Regeneration with the Undaunted ability Sanguine Altar, which gives allies a synergy to heal for 40% of their max health and applies minor lifesteal to all enemies within 28 meters, healing your allies every second they are damaging them. You reposition this altar along with your orbs and seeds as the fights move around the field. Everything else plays exactly as we discussed before. The downside to this setup is you lack the self heals from radiating regeneration, its passive healing to allies and the globals they don't have damage sources out, and the proc healing from Chokethorn. The upside is you have a truly monstrous tooltip on your Polar Wind, and with it we'll be able to spam oppressive amounts of burst healing and oftentimes simply give enemy teams no chance. You also get to walk around with the health amount truly worthy of the name Raid Boss. If you made it this far in the video, I genuinely thank you and hope it provided value for you. If you learned something or want to support the work, please consider liking and subscribing. If you have any thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in live gameplay, I'm a member of the Elder Scrolls Online official stream team and stream regularly at the game room on Twitch. Come say hello, I'd love to meet you. A quick disclaimer and then a huge thank you to our patrons. Big shout out to Maddox for the inspiration for the video format. Thank you for watching and as always, have a wonderful day.